Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you're all doing well and for today I'm going to do a review of something that I thought I had already done, which is echolines. In a previous video I decided to review some inks that I thought to be echolines, which were actually Winsor Newton's colored inks. Those are not echolines and I had no idea and a friend of mine called me to attention so I decided to redeem myself by actually buying a starter pack and doing some tests. So unlike the colored inks, I never actually touched echolines. <laughs> I had used the other ones for like a little detail or something but I had never actually worked with them. I was not as unfamiliar as I am with echolines. I bought the starter pack, it has the three primary colors plus a green and a black. The black resembles a pain gray more but it's quite nice and it's one of my favorite of the pack actually. <laughs> I started by doing some swatches as I usually do with things that I'm new to and the swatches kind of give me a clue on how the pigments would behave or some things that I should expect but overall it was a bit unexpected of an experience. Let me just say that I had really high expectations because Echolines are marketed as liquid watercolors, which raises my expectation of them to be exactly like watercolors a lot, which is a bit unfair, I realize, <laughs> but it is the way they are marketed. Because of the original piece, uh, I drew a restaurant from Paris. The original reference is of the restaurant called Le Basilic. I decided to change the name a bit and call it Le Basilisk and draw like a dish that I could find maybe there. <laughs> so I went for some pasta with mushrooms and some spinach. I decided to apply a different technique for inking that I saw in Cosmic Spectrum's Skillshare class which is basically to mix that colored ink from Winsor Newton with my china ink. Coincidentally, I use exactly the same china ink as she does, so I thought it would be a fun experiment. This was a bit of my mistake because I am not used to the ratios and this would later come back and bite me. But basically, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to have a lighter line art for food. It would give it a lighter tone, a more appetizing color. And I did my line art just as usual with a Nico G nib and my oblique pen holder. So when everything was ready, I started laying down my light and base colors. And at this point, I realized why my line art was going to hinder me. So basically, as I started laying down my colors, I noticed that the line art was sort of bleeding into the colors. I think you can tell pretty well on the wine that it has like a yellowish tone in some areas. I also noticed that as I was painting, the line art started fading a bit in some areas and I had to retouch it a bit later on, but it wasn't a major issue. I guess it just serves to show that I need to work a bit better with this technique and to figure out how much to mix next time.
Really enjoying how they the inks are behaving they bleed pretty easily onto each other with which makes transitions great um so so far so good however as soon as i let the colors dry and getting ready to apply new layers is where i started to notice that stuff wasn't really going as i expected it to go so first i had to keep my eye out for the page because in my swatches it bled through and I'm not sure if that's because of how much pigment I used uh, instead of diluting it a bit more. And also, even if I waited for the color to dry, when I applied my second layer of color, instead of getting like a well-defined line of color, uh, it would bleed as if the base color was still wet and not completely dry. So this is like my first absolute negative, which I hated a lot. In Echolines. Even if I wait for my first layer of color to dry, I cannot actually layer it because it will bleed anyway. <laughs> I was getting pretty frustrated at this point, especially with the wine bottle. I was like, okay, I hate this already. I want to give up. But I pushed through and it didn't improve from here. In some areas where the color would dry, it would be similar to the Winston and Newton color dinks, where the color would like leave a weird pattern texture on the paper. Um, I don't really understand why that happens. These were fairly dil diluted, so I'm not sure if it's the amount of pigment, but yeah, I hated it. <laughs> Now looking back at my process, I think that Echolines are not a bad tool, however I maybe need to study them a bit more or, and how to use them. I love to layer my inks, I love to layer watercolors and get the effects that I am aiming for, and I never really have problems using either watercolors or gouache, and I really had a lot of trouble using doing that here. So I think I need to study a bit better my ratios or methods of layering, I guess. I think maybe Echolines would work better for a simpler drawing. For me, it didn't work good at all because of how I paint. I just, I just use a lot of ink and being in constant fear that it's going to pass through the paper or ruin the paper is not a great feeling. <laughs> Overall, I can't say honestly that I recommend Echolines. I can see these being great if you are traveling, maybe, for example, and you don't want to go through the hassle of mixing your colors, or if you use tubes instead of pans, it might be a bit more comfortable. Overall, I didn't really enjoy them. Between them and the accidental use of colored inks, I think I'd rather use the colored inks. I think I never gave such a negative review. <laughs> anyway, art materials are not a size fits all. So if you're curious, I do recommend you get this primary set. It is around 17 euros if I'm not mistaken. I bought it with my own money, of course. You get three colors. You get a lot of 
color mixes from those three colors, you get a beautiful gray, which is my favorite pigment out of this set. It's a beautiful pain gray. And you also get a green, which is okay. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this really mediocre review. <laughs> and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!